Hello and welcome back to Tectonic. So tonight I'm going to show you something that makes the M4 Mac Mini that's already a pretty cool little computer into something I think looking even cooler. This is a case that Zero have very kindly sent me. They reached out and said, looking at the things I've been recently reviewing, maybe I'd like to have a go with this. So um, it's not sponsored by them. It's just been sent to me and I thought I would show you and you can make up your own mind as to whether you think it adds value to your system or not. It's mostly something for the aesthetics, so it looks really cool. This is it. It's a chunky case making your Mac Mini, M4 Mac Mini anyway, uh, look rather like a Mac Pro. It's just got class written all over it. So what I thought I'd do is install my Mac into this and take you around the features and all the pluses and the odd minus and let you make up your own mind as to whether you think it's any good or not. Personally, I think it's great and my M4 Mac Mini is gonna live in this one from now on. Anyway, let's install one. So here we are. This is the standard M4 Mac Mini. This is the Mac Mini Pro with the extra ports on it and the slightly beefier chip, but it's exactly the same as the standard M4 Mac Mini. And here is Zira's new case. So this has a magnetic featured top, which you can just pull off on the top there. And then inside that there's a plastic housing, which I should take out, which you then slip your Mac Mini into. This leaves a really nice shell. This is so well made. Um, you might notice at the bottom there, there's a little heat pad there. So you can peel the surface off of that. So when you pop your M4 Mac Mini into that, it, uh, it connects to it to help dissipate heat into this really good shell. So what we need to do to start with is open this up and this is a little clamshell system where you pop your M4 Mac Mini into it. So let's get that done. Now when you pop it in there, there's a certain orientation for it. So it goes lid side down, top side down, so you exposing the uh, the the fan and where the airflow is. And then this little piece that goes on the, the top of it also has a little pass through because it's got a power switch on there. So if I just pop that on there like that, and that's it clipped in there. So that automatically sets you up for the orientation for popping this into the main aluminum shell. So what I'm looking to do is align where the power button is, which you can see just there with that one there. So that kind of will give you your direction. And then of course your fan will be facing out from there. So I'll just slot that into there. Nice and carefully. And that now gives me my Mac mini inside there and access to the power button from the side. I'll pop the lid back on, whoops, in a sec. There we go. Now at this stage, it's probably good to point out that extra little feature in there. So in the top, there's a whole section here, which is uh, which is empty. So if you've got um, an SSD drive, let me just reach around and grab one of my little sand disks. So this is a one terabyte sand disk drive, lovely and quick, ideal little one to go with a Mac mini. And that will happily pop in the top there. So I can leave that and then thread the cable through the back and feed it into there to keep it nice and neat. And there's air vents on the side to help dissipate the heat again on there. So I'll pop that on there and then the magnetic lid on there. And that's basically my Mac Pro, mini Mac Pro all assembled. So let's plug that back in and uh, have a little look. So here we go. If we just take our power cable and plug it in the bottom there, there's plenty of easy access to all the connectors on this. I'm pretty impressed with it. And then my HDMI cable, I'm going to run in this on HDMI. And if I grab a small USB-C cable, I can plug it in one of the back ports and then carefully thread it through the top. So I can go on to attach my uh, one of my many <laughs> extra storage options in the top of the machine. And that fits nice and snugly in there. I'll get a smaller cable or a shorter cable in the future, but I'll just clip the little magnetic lid on and away we go. And I think that looks really, really neat. So let's power it up. That very familiar sound there. And there we go, up and running. So I'm gonna slot it into place now. And this is 
where it will live. In fact, I'll tuck it in under the monitor uh, finally because uh, it's kind of sticking out a little bit. But it's right next to my Raspberry Pi 5 there, sitting very happily. So that's my M4 Mac Mini tucked away nicely in its new housing. And you can see it just down there. I think it looks really, really smart. It's actually available in two colours. So they do the silver aluminium, which is the one that I've got, and they do do a black one, which probably is pretty cool as well. So I didn't have that one to try, but um, you know you can go and have a look on the rep on the website. I'll put some links down below so you can uh, go and check that out. And it sells for about £99, but I've seen lots of discount codes floating around, including on the site if you visit it, and then go to click away, they kind of give you a little option to get a discount code. So um, I'll leave that one up to you. Going through all the main features, I think it just makes the Mac look different and smart. The one downside I found, a little bit like some of the other add-on housings that you can get the little base uh, adapters to go underneath the Mac, is interference with Wi-Fi. Now, I guess you would probably think this would interfere with Wi-Fi as well, because it's a big slab of aluminium that the Mac is tucked in inside. And what I found is if you have the Mac orientated towards your router, assuming you're connecting by Wi-Fi, then uh, you, with the open side where the fan is pointing towards the router um, or the general direction of it, it's absolutely fine. I don't see any drop in speed. If I have it with effectively the back of the case, so the part where, which is solid aluminium directed towards the router, then I would drop to about half my normal speed. So uh, for a lot of people, I know they just plug it in through a Cat5 uh, cable, and I do that as well most of the time. But um, it certainly didn't make it less functional, but what it did do was improve the, the cooling. So it's been, I did some stress testing, and things like the fan didn't fire up as quickly as it ordinarily would. So it's definitely some advantages there from that side, but keep in mind that I think anything where you put a slab of metal around your computer, then it's gonna block Wi-Fi. Network cable, not an, not an issue. Anyway, uh, that just leaves me to say thanks for watching, and if you would like to give it a like, I would greatly appreciate that. That does definitely help the channel. I've seen quite a bit of growth recently. And if you would like to subscribe, if you haven't, then you would hopefully get informed when I've got another video out, and I've got one coming out on Sunday, which I think you will enjoy. There's also a thanks button now down the bottom. So if you think there's any value in what I tell, tell you and show you, then uh, you can always thank me that way. So that's rather nice. Um, I'd like to see you soon. Bye-bye.